Following my upload of the Danny fake 3D rotation video to our Facebook group, I received a request in the comments to create a tutorial for that particular scene. Stay tuned until the end of this tutorial as I'll be announcing an exciting giveaway. Two lucky winners will each win a free Create Studio license and I'm also giving away two free Photo Vibrance licenses. This is your chance to enhance your animation projects with these robust tools by Videlo. So here it is. First, I looked in the 3D library for some background of an office that would have more than one perspective. So I took this office view and I get this here on my timeline. The first thing I will do is to add a custom animation. Just to be safe, in case I need to rearrange the background, I will choose position, scale and rotation. For the easing, I will select linear. I extend the custom animation length by getting the end keyframe right here. Now I'll open properties and I'll change the Y rotation value to a minus 83. And then, still having my playhead on the last keyframe, I am moving the background here to the right side, just next to the right edge of the canvas. Let's test it out and see how it slides. Now let's bring another perspective of the same office background and I'll pick this one and bring it here on the timeline. Having this last added background group selected, I'll add a custom animation. I'll assign a linear easing and I will select again position, scale and rotation just in case I'll need to edit at the end. Right now I will only use rotation. I'll also extend this custom animation length by getting the end keyframe right here to match the other one below. Making sure I have my new added background selected, I'll bring the playhead back to the first keyframe and I move my background here to the left like this. I go here to properties and I will change the Y rotation value to 74. I'll try this a little bit to see how it rotates. It is looking great only that if you pay attention to the armchair right here, it is duplicated and this won't look so great in the final animation, so I need to fix that. What will I do? So I will bring this background from below and bring it here over the other one and now I'll push this one further to the right here on the canvas, just like this. Now, to have this one to fill the entire canvas, I will just scale the background like this. The scale property I was assigning before when I added the custom animation comes in handy right now when I need to scale my background. If I rotate and test one more time, I'm still not satisfied with the armchair on the right side. I will scale the below background here to the right side until the armchair goes out of the side beneath the other background. If I rotate to test again, notice here in the office created corner that now it looks much better. I'll quickly get this background shorter just where the last keyframe is. Once it is outside the canvas, I don't need it anymore in view. Now let me go inside this background group here to remove unnecessary elements. I'll leave the table, the seat, but I won't need the desk and I won't need the chair. Let's go back to the main timeline and if I try to see how it looks, I will need something right here to mask the rough edges. So to do that, I will just bring in a square shape and I will adjust its size and aspect to cover only the upper part, only the windows. I'll extend this shape here on the timeline and I will reduce the opacity a little bit. I'll add a custom animation for this shape. I will select position, scale and rotation. Take the last keyframe and bring that here to be in line with the other keyframes from the elements below and having my playhead right on this last keyframe, I'll simply grab and move the shape right here to follow the edge between the two backgrounds. And so you can see that the shape is following the background movement. Next, I will go to the effects section and I'll get the blur effect 
and drop it right on top of the shape here on the timeline. I'll increase the strength value here to about 185. I go back to the effects and I will also grab the edge feather effect and drop it to my shape as well. For this one I will increase the feather strength to about 12%. Now I switch here to settings and I am bringing the opacity back to 100. Let's open the color panel. I click to grab the color picker and I will select the light blue of the windows on my background. I will also adjust the shape a little bit like this. Now that I have this shape all animated and with desired effects applied, I will make a copy by duplicating the shape I was just working on. I will bring this one here below, making sure it's in the same line and all I'm left to do is to go here and change the color to match the floor of my background. Ok, looking great so far. And now it is time to bring Danny on the scene. So I'll go here to 3D Creator and I'll just bring him here on the timeline. I grab this little square and I will extend his action to match the other elements. For this example, I'll need a different action for Danny. I scroll here through his actions, I'll get this working on PC action, click again on his action to open this little menu here and let's disable start and end of this action, as I want my character to sit and work on the PC for the entire time of this part of the animation. Now I'll adjust a little bit and position him like this. I would like to change the image of my character PC screen. I go here to customize, I select here the PC screen and I go here to my global media and I select my image that will be placed on the PC screen and just like that my image was applied on his PC screen. Having my character selected, I will add a custom animation. I select character view, position, scale and for the easing I'll choose linear. Let's just bring the last keyframe of the animation right here to the right like this. Having my playhead here right on the last keyframe, I'll go here and click on rotate and just rotate my character to the left to find a nice position for him working on PC, a front half profile. Looking good so far. Now I will need another action for my Danny boy. I will add him this jump in action right after he finishes working on that PC. Please don't mind that little glitch of Danny for this jump in action. I tried to restart Create Studio a couple of times to get rid of it with no success, so don't mind that as this will not show in the published video. Now I'll just try to find a perfect spot where my character is about to stand up from PC to add a custom animation and I guess right here would be great. I'll just add a custom animation, I'll try this circ easing and I will select here character view. And now making sure I have my playhead on the last keyframe, I click on rotate and I will rotate my character to have him facing the camera. I added this action just for a little fun. You can add whatever action you'd like for your character. Also for fun, I will add one more action to Danny. I want him to blow a kiss at the end, so I'll select the blow a kiss action. If I play this a little bit, I notice that my character is not facing the camera, so I place the playhead on the last keyframe and I will just click here on reset view. And now I have my character facing the camera, let me just go here to his background at the bottom of my timeline and extend it a little bit. Now when Danny is turning with his face towards the camera, I'd like to have like a light leak effect to surround him, just for effects purposes. To do that, I'll go here to the studio and scroll down to transitions, I will sort this out by light leaks 
and I'll just take this orange transition and bring it right here on my timeline. This is a video file. I will reduce the opacity to about 55%. I'll try a few more times to determine where exactly to place this transition. And I believe right here would look just great. Now I want my backgrounds to be a little bit blurry, so I'll go to the effects section and I will just bring this blur effect right on my background here on the timeline and this is looking great, making my character to stand out. Like the camera is focusing on him, I'll do the same for the other background. This looks just great, although something is missing, a little bit of camera movement. I will go here to effects one more time and I'll switch here to components and let's just drag the camera and drop it on the canvas. This activated my camera track right here and with a double click I add my first camera animation. I bring this camera animation all the way here to the left and make it shorter like this. Then right click and select Expo Easing. Having my playhead before the camera animation, I resize my camera to start as a medium size having my character in focus. Now I'll move the playhead over here to the right of my camera animation and scale the camera a little bit, keeping the focus on Danny working on PC. I'll try it slowly to see if he stays in the camera view while he is rotating. And it seems it is all looking good. Right here I'll add another camera animation, I will make it shorter like this and I will select again Expo Easing. I don't need to make any changes with my playhead before the camera animation, but I need to adjust my camera for the end position, so I need my playhead to be here on the right side of the camera animation and I'll just make the camera bigger like this, almost a full size. If I play it a little bit to see the result, I think it looks great. Maybe I just need to make the first camera animation a little bit longer like this. And now I think it's looking even better. Some little adjustments I also want to make, I want the background to become clear right after Danny jumps in. To do that, I will open the blur effect I have previously added to my background and I will switch this out animation on. So this will make the blur disappear at the end of the element so it will become clear. And now, right here where Danny jumped in, I'll bring this blur out animation to that position. Next, I select these two square shapes and group them together and I'll make this group a little bit shorter. I go to the motion group, make sure I'm on the out action and select fade and fade out. I will adjust its length like this. When I play this, watch right here on this side of the canvas, these two squares will fade out. I will readjust a little bit, let's play the whole scene to see the result. Just as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, let me tell you what you need to do to get a chance to win a free license of Create Studio or a free license of Photo Vibrance. To engage in the giveaway and stand a chance to win a free license of Create Studio, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on this video. The comment should contain hashtag new subscriber to be included in the lucky draw. The lucky draw will take place exactly 5 days from now. I will use the TubeBuddy Pick a Winner tool to select a winner and I will screen 
record the draw and publish it in a short video on my channel. So make sure you're tuned in to see if you're one of the lucky winners. To be fair to all my audience and subscribers, I will also give away two free licenses of Photo Vibrance. Whether you are already subscribed or you are a new subscriber, you get in the draw if you comment on this video and make sure the comment includes hashtag Photo Vibrance. So don't forget to subscribe, like and hit that notification bell to get notified when the lucky winner will be announced and see you in my next video.